The Bowling Other Show. We all know that Rockstar Games is a penchant for high quality cinematic presentation in their games. With Max Payne 3, they may have outdone themselves. But while the Rockstar label lately has been recognizably applied to lengthy, open world games where you roam freely, like the Grand Theft Auto series, Red Dead Redemption, and Team Bondi's LA Noir, Max Payne 3 is undoubtedly a Max Payne game. It's a linear shooter with an engaging story, addictive action, incredible presentation, and all sorts of polish. In short, this is one what? awesome game. Things kick off with an obviously tattered and torn Max Payne. Stricken with grief over the loss of his wife and daughter, he finds himself in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in a constant state of intoxication by way of alcohol and painkillers. It's clear that he's doing anything he can to numb the pain, and you immediately feel for his character. The story of his existence in Brazil is as engaging as the story that brought him there, told in several flashback sequences right alongside his current tale. As we come to expect from Rockstar, the characters in Max Payne 3 are believable, well-acted, and well-written. Max himself, most of all. His entire journey is narrated as if he is reading his autobiography back to you, and his monologue helps flesh out every scene in the game. Every word he utters reiterates that he is beaten down both physically and mentally, and you're constantly reminded of how broken he is throughout the experience. I tried not to think about when it was that my existence became less about the things that make up people's lives and more about the holes that losing those things leave behind, but I wasn't doing a very good job at it. The view in Max Payne 3 doubles and jitters on occasion, and while that sounds like it might be annoying, it's entirely the opposite. The creative presentation gives you a glimpse of the world through Max Payne's intoxicated eyes and gives the visual filter a life of its own. And when the game throws in some text captions with select words and phrases during cutscenes, it reminds of the 2004 film Man on Fire directed by Tony Scott and starring Denzel Washington. You know who I am? It's very much the same edgy vibe and it comes off brilliantly in the game. Throw in a killer soundtrack and you've got all the makings of standard setting presentation. And I need to tip my hat to this. The game largely doesn't shoehorn in any quick time events. There are a multitude of moments where the playable action stops and you get to watch Max get out of some intense jams, and it doesn't force these cutscenes to be interactive. Max Payne 3 is content to let cutscenes be cutscenes, and it is better for it. The shooting itself is furious, violent, and extremely satisfying. Max will have to deal with droves of enemies that are trying to stop him in his tracks with an assortment of guns, all of which of course are available for you to pick up if you defeat your foe. And while you'll probably find some of your own favorite guns to stick to, all are useful and effective, and none are throwaways. Though I was a bit surprised to find the laser sighted guns a bit unwieldy when I expected them to provide an advantage. Bullet time is intact, of course, and very effective. Shooting enemies fills up your bullet time meter, enabling you to slow down time and quickly zero in on some headshots, lighting up your enemies and taking many down quickly. It's straight up necessary to use it to survive, but it looks so damn good that you'll probably use it even if you didn't need to. However, the shoot dodge mechanic, where Max dies in slow motion while shooting at his enemies isn't quite as handy as it leaves you vulnerable after you land. But leaving that out of the equation doesn't make the game feel any less exciting. Checkpoints are typically marked by killing the last enemy in a group, punctuated by a gruesome slow motion kill. This scene can be made even more brutal by holding a button to slow it down even more, and you can keep pumping bullets in until your clip runs out. It's nothing more than a nice aesthetic touch in the campaign, but in the arcade mode, where you're trying to earn the most points to compete on leaderboards, it's actually useful because it earns you more points. The campaign isn't terribly long, coming in at under 10 hours, but none of it is monotonous or uninteresting. The settings are diverse in visual style and strategic layout, and there are even a few awesome on-rail sequences that are just long enough. 
Some areas are difficult to get through at first, but on the whole, the checkpoints are comfortably placed to properly balance the challenge. It isn't until close to the end of the game when several checkpoints seem to be spaced out a little too far, and that can get a bit frustrating. Even so, this excellent campaign is something that you're very likely to want to experience more than once. Maybe to try to tackle a higher skill level, or maybe just to see it all happen again. But if all you want is more gameplay, there are plenty of other great ways to get it. There are two other single player modes in the game that will pit you against global leaderboards. Arcade mode lets you pick any chapter of the game and try to get as many points as possible. Accuracy earns you extra points while getting hit by enemies takes them away. Similarly, the New York Minute mode is a time trial with the best times being ranked per chapter. Leaderboard junkies could hack away at these modes for hours on end. But there's also competitive multiplayer. Rockstar could have tacked on a couple of modes and kept a few people happy, but this is actually pretty fleshed out. It's got customizable classes and unlockable avatars, weapons, items, and abilities. It's got a good amount of modes too, from free-for-all deathmatch modes to team deathmatch modes, rookie, standard, and large, and a couple more novel modes. There's Painkiller, where the first killer becomes Max and the first victim becomes his partner, Passos, and each must stay alive for as long as possible. And then there's Gang Wars, a particularly cool mode where two teams compete over five scenarios, the fifth of which being a team deathmatch showdown with limited lives where the amount of lives each team has is determined by their successes, or lack thereof, of the previous four events. When you've been sticking around for all five events, the last showdown was a pretty tense one. Since the PC version equally supports the use of a gamepad or a mouse and keyboard control scheme, Max Payne 3 actually offers two separate sets of multiplayer servers in the form of Softlock and Free Aim. Softlock is generally used for gamepads and gently guides your crosshair to a nearby enemy when aiming. Free Aim offers no aim assist and is reserved for the hardcore players. It's a great idea, however the Softlock servers are not very populated at the moment, at least beyond the rookie servers. Everyone's over at the Free Aim servers, and if you're using a gamepad over there, you won't live long. If you're liking the multiplayer modes in Max Payne 3, it's definitely best to play on the free aim servers and just become accustomed to the mouse and keyboard control to be competitive. With no real visual artifacts or stuck areas, my experience with Max Payne 3 was largely bug free. I say largely though because it wasn't completely spotless. There were two occasions where I experienced hard crashes during cutscenes and was forced to alt tab out of the game and end the task. I didn't lose any save games over it and I only had to replay very short parts to get back to where I was and the same crash never happened twice, but it bears mentioning. So with everything on the table, here's the bottom line. I'm giving Max Payne 3 a 4.5 out of 5. It's an awesome game. I'm hard pressed to think of one with cinematic presentation as good as this game provides. The characters are well written and well acted, the action is tight and intense, and the story is engaging. When you're through the campaign, there's plenty else to do with the arcade and New York Minute modes, and the competitive multiplayer is fully featured with plenty of room for progression. The drawbacks are few and far between, but I can't quite ignore the areas towards the end of the game where the checkpoints get a bit too far apart, and the couple of hard crashes I experienced leave a slight blemish on the technical side of things. But these small gripes aside, Max Payne 3 is easily one of the best games to come out so far this year. If you allow yourself to skip this title, you're really missing out on something special. Now if you have any comments on the review or the game Max Payne 3, be sure to leave your comments below, and as usual, Thanks for visiting Default Prime, and thanks for watching the Bowling Otter Show. We'll see you next time. I ain't slipping, man. I'm slipped.